I get it. It sounds crazy. I'm probably fucking butchering that. I mean, it could be a coincidence, but like, come on. Like, that's mental. I'm sorry, this just can't be a coincidence. I refuse to believe it's a coincidence. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I actually, I accidentally just pressed record way quicker than I was meant to. I was was gonna get myself set up, but um, you know what? I'm recording now, so uh, let's just go for it. So this video is a little bit different from my normal content, but it is something I am extremely interested in. Um, and a little just like a little disclaimer at the forefront: this isn't meant to be taken too seriously. This video is just for fun, just because I love the investigation process that goes with making content like this. And in all honesty, friggin' live for a conspiracy theory. Obviously, some of the stuff I'm gonna say in this video is like undeniable that it's just facts, and some of it is kind of like and debatable so i'm gonna leave sources all in the description so if you want to do some more research on your own then go ahead and feel free to debate whatever i'm saying in the comments because that'll be fun but this is just my research from being interested in this topic so it's already a minute and 18 seconds into the video and I haven't even told you what we're going to be talking about. So today, we are going to be talking about the hollow earth theory. The theory of Agatha, which basically says or is a place that is in the cent the theory says is in the center of the earth and it's where a super evolved race of giants lives. Let's investigate it, shall we? So, starting off this theory, we need to talk a little bit about what Agatha is. Agatha is said to be a place that is in the centre of the earth that can be entered through the north and through the through the north and through the south pole, and that's how you would get to it. And um, within Agatha live a group of humans or creatures we don't know, um, that are said to be uh, way, way, way more advanced than we are. They're also said to be giants. That's a big kind of thing that goes with the Agatha theory is that it's a race of like super advanced giants, basically, um, that live in the centre of our Earth. There are other ways you can access Agatha as well. Um, some say it's through Peru, through the temples, um, the pyramids of the Great Pyramid of Giza, and we will go on a little bit more into those theories as well throughout the video. So it is fact that we really don't know too much about the composition of our Earth. A lot of the things that we are taught and told are just theories themselves. We obviously are always told we actually know more about the surface of the moon than the bottom of our oceans. So as you can imagine, we can't dig deep enough to really know what our planet is made of. And I think that is a big place that this theory stems from, is not really knowing much about um, what is going on inside this little planet of ours. So people need to kind of attach something to it. Um, Agatha is seen quite heavily throughout Buddhism. So the, the name Agatha actually stems from Buddhism is seen um, as a space in the middle of our earth that is inhabited by an advanced race. Um, within Buddhism, obviously this is seen, but it's also seen in a lot of ancient mythology. They talk about a space in the middle of our planet that is inhabited. Um, within ancient mythology as well, we also see a reference to giants a lot. We see a reference to um, gods with bird heads and gods with fish heads. And this ancient mythology stems across many years and many different countries as well that we are seeing the repeat of these gods and these giants. So again, another kind of uh, clue almost that points towards there might have been something like this in our past. So that is a little bit of a brief overview of the theory of Agatha. I get it, it sounds crazy, but I think we should delve into it a bit further. Um, and I decided to start with going a little bit off 
topic in a sense but not really and talking about some of the architectural structures ancient architectural structures that exist on our planet that we just can't figure out how they were built so there are obviously loads of these but i'm going to focus on two main examples well three i'm going to go into the great pyramid of gaza a giza a little bit um God, Giza. I'm going to go into the Great Pyramid a little bit, but there is two that I really want to talk about for um, this topic mainly, um, and I'm going to talk about those now. So, like I said, we have many structures in our on our planet that we just don't know how they were built because the people who existed at that time from modern history's teachings we don't think they had the technology or the capability to build such structures so we just can't fathom that they built them and i do starting with think it's a little bit mental that we think that we are the most advanced race that has or race the most advanced civilization that has ever existed before like the world is so old and i understand evolution and we've gotten like i, I get that but like come on like there's been mass extinctions before we know this so i do think it is like mental to think that we're the most advanced like there could have easily been some people before us that were smart too like i don't think that's crazy to to think about anyway the first place we are going to get into is sax say oh, i've kind of how to say it so the first place i'm going to talk about is sax say um which translates as royal eagle um and it is in peru and what sax say <laughs> i'm probably and butchering that um is is a fortress on top of a mountain based in peru and we have no idea how this was built what it is is i'm trying to try and overlay some pictures but it is giant rocks stacked up on top of each other to build these giant fortress walls and the ancient story like many ancient um mythologic stories is that Saxe Huamon was built by giants and obviously this structure predates the invention of the wheel that we're taught in like modern history um the theory behind it is that these giants obviously carried these giant boulders up um to build this structure this structure how we see it today the walls when it was found by the um, Spaniards who were colonising Peru, um, were about three to four metres higher than how we, we see it today. Um, and I, I, from the pictures, if you go and see it today, it's already massive. It's still seen as somewhere that um, people go to um, worship the winter solstice and to spend New Year's. Um, so this is, there's not kind of, I don't think there's too much uh, craziness around this Peruvian um, temple, how, like, fortress, I think it's fortress more than a temple. However, this one is purely just, it's massive. How did it get there? Like, how did, how were the rocks transported? How much manpower was used? It's just, the scale of it is what we can't, figure out how it was done and can't comprehend. The next one brings me into true conspiracy theory vibes. And that is Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan, I think is how you say this one. And Teotihuacan is, I actually love this, this story. So this Teotihuacan is a, this is a temple kind of town structure based in Mexico. What Teotihuacan is built around is two main big pyramids, which are the sun and moon temples, and then a variety of smaller structures around this. Um, and Teotihuacan is also known as the Temple of the Gods in Mexico. And what is so fascinating about this place is like, um, 
I'm not even gonna bother saying again, like the previously mentioned Peruvian fortress. Um, it is massive and the comprehension of how it was built um, is just mind blowing. However, from above satellite images, Teotihuacan looks like a computer circuit board. So I think I got some pictures of this, so I'm gonna try and overlay them now. So it looks like a computer circus board, circuit board with the sun and the moon temple being the two switch points of the circuit board, which, I mean, it could be a coincidence, but like, come on, like that's mental. And so that's, one part of it. It also um, is like based on lines up with um, the stars of Orion's belt. So it's got the three, the three line temples. So whoever built this structure didn't just have a comprehension of architect architecture with the way it's built. They also had a co comprehension of like advanced mathematics and technology and astrology. I'm sorry, this just can't be a coincidence. I refuse to believe it's a coincidence. Um, and on top of that, thinking about going back to Chiotihuacan being um, a satellite image of, well, from a, a satellite image or from above, being um, the replica of a, um, a computer circuit board, it was also, and I had to write this down because this is not in my world, inside the walls is a, like a material called mica which isn't found in mexico it's actually found three thousand miles away in brazil and it's built into the walls of these structures and the weird thing is is that it wasn't used for aesthetics it makes no difference to the aesthetic of the structures what mica is used for is to is a, as, a, as a product that is stable when it's exposed to electricity. So it's used to like store and hold electricity. And that is kind of what like leads people to believe that Teotihuacan was a power plant, kind of, I guess, like some uses somewhere to like store electricity. Very interesting. Um, another place that I'm actually going to make a whole video about because I feel like it just needs a whole video in its own because it's so fascinating and if we do, architects do get to the bottom of this place, it will rewrite history. Like that is insane to me. So a place in Turkey called Glub Globi Teke, Globi Teke, I think Globi Teke, um, is basically an ancient civilization that was recently found that predates when we thought humans were building civilizations. So it, if and when they get to any answers with Globi Teke, Globi Teke, it will honestly, it will rewrite the history books. And I really feel like that needs a whole video in itself. So I'm not going to go into that just now. Um, but again, super fascinating place. And we have no idea how it got here. Like we don't know who built it. And I think that's the kind of the big thing with um, Teotihuacan is like, we don't, we have no idea who built it. Um, or why it's just existing and being fabulous basically it also um has an unbelievable amount of similarities to the great pyramids um the first being obviously the great pyramids are also aligned with orion's belt so the understanding of astrology is there from those as well i don't want to go into the pyramids too much because i feel like we know a lot about, I don't know, maybe, we, we know more about the pyramids than the previous two. Okay, sorry about that, getting back into the pyramids. Where was I? Really know how they were built. We know it was just mass man power. Um, that's basically what we think it, it was that built the pyramids. Um, but for their time period, they are insanely advanced and that is why we question how they built them because we don't 
know how advanced people were back then. Um, obviously for 3,800 years, I think it's called Ko Kofi, Khufu, the biggest pyramid um, in Egypt. That was the tallest man-made structure in the world for 3,800 years. These things are, I would love to go and see them. They're just meant to be insane. They are so meticulously put together that you couldn't fit a strand of human hair through any of the cracks or anything. They are literally put together like you couldn't have been a milli millimeter out of place and it would have all gone wrong. They are just mind-blowingly insane. Teoti Hukan, um, they're aligned with Orion's belt and Going into our next point, they point towards, oops, well, the big one, points towards the polar star, I think it's called Alpha Dracos, Alpha Dracios, and that leads in to my next point. So, why am I talking about these ancient civilizations that um, we don't really understand? And because the similarities we see in all these ancient civilizations all over the world all point back to an advanced civilization that must have must have existed at some point and it influenced these structures for us to see the vast amount of similarities throughout all of them and not similarities just in their build and their architecture but in the gods that they worshipped and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video some of the gods they worshipped were gods that were based at the centre of the earth they were giant fish heads and like bird heads these things are all seen throughout ancient civilizations that didn't exist in the same time period and didn't exist in the same places and people have rolled this into being an ancient civilization that was very advanced that must have existed and this comes back to Agatha and being that center of the earth civilization that we don't know anything about that just live among us. Um, people also obviously put this down to um, Atlantis as well, the lost city, and I think that is something I'll go into in another video because it's something I'm very interested in. This tattoo is for Atlantis, so it is something I'm very interested in. I actually can't believe I haven't made these videos before, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so we are gonna get into the next point, which is bringing it forward into a bit more modern day history with Admiral Robert Byrd. Admiral Robert Byrd was a explorer, um, well, he, I think he was an admiral in the Navy, but um, he was also known as a great explorer. He was said to be one of the first few people to explore the um, poles, so the North and South Pole, I think, which we're gonna get into in the story. His North Pole expedition is a bit kind of controversial whether he actually made it there or not. I disputed. Um, and he's also known for discovering Mount Sidley, which is the largest dormant volcano in Antarctica. So he was a dude, basically. He was an adventurer dude. And once he made, so this is the one which is why it's disputed. So his North Pole um, expedition is disputed. It's kind of been ruled out that they tracked the flight paths. He couldn't have ever made it to where he said he made it to. It was actually um, some guys who did it a few days later that were the first to be there one of the first to be there um so it was his in 1946 he flew a mission to the north pole um, and he reported a mysterious land in the center of the north pole that he declared to be a great unknown he said that they were flying over lush green areas that just shouldn't have been there and he made claims about seeing a city and flight, like flight things that we'd just never seen before and an advanced civilization that used these planes, but I think he, he used another word for them, that could move from pole to pole through our planet. So he basically claimed that he saw Agatha and this is one of the main um, kind of points that people use to to prove Agatha is that this 1940s um, Robert Byrd 
Admiral Robert Byrd theory is obviously it's been um and I think is as every good conspiracy theory Robert Byrd has been hush hushed or oh, he's obviously passed now but was hush hushed at the time um and told to stop talking about this wild theory um and then told that he basically did never even make it to the north pole or we were told so there is a lot of controversy obviously around the robert bird theory but still very interesting one thing that robert bird did say and this was in 1946 bear in mind he said that it was clear from when he was on the poles that the world was getting warmer and warmer and it was going to be very important that we keep investigating these places because they are going to be very important to our future which we all know now and um he was one of the kind of the pioneers that was like we need to investigate these places um and they want to move into so that is the Robert Byrd theory. Um, I do also want to talk about um, a scientific expedition that was done in 2012 as well. Um, this is kind of moving away from the conspiracy element of this theory and just kind of really reiterating how little we do know about our planet and the fact that this theory, there might not be this insanely advanced ancient civilization living under our polar ice caps but there is a wild ecosystem under there that we know nothing about that is proven by a scientific study that was done in 2012. So in 2012 um, a bunch of researchers um, led by, let me find his name for you, uh, John Prisou? John Prisou um, they led a Antarctic research product project that um, wanted to investigate the ecosystem under Antarctica. So under the 2,000 miles of ice um, in Antarctica, there is a system of rivers and lakes that rival the Amazon. And we have seen none of these, obviously. They're covered by 2,000 miles of ice. We know nothing about them. We've never been to them. We've never seen them. And what they, so they're called subglacial lakes. And what they did on this project was they drilled down all the way in to basically prove that these lakes were there, which they did, then did prove. And then they tested um, these lakes to see if there was any like biologics or anything in them. Um, and there was organisms from the testing, there are organisms living under there. So although the Agatha theory seems wild and far-fetched, we know that there are organisms, be those as small as like little bacterias, living under the thousands and thousands of miles of ice in the Arctic, which is mental. And that's so exciting in itself. Um, and I think a lot of people, when they are uh, talking about Agatha, um, they use flashes of newspaper articles that were talking about this project, um, this expedition. So it would be like a, a Sunday Times article about the rivers and lakes under the Arctic um, that have stuff in them, like life in them. Um, and they use that to justify their theories of Agatha and be like, this was pushed down, but it's just talking about these subglacial lakes that they found um, underneath the ice caps. And yeah, I think that's everything I really wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed my insane ramblings and got a little bit of insight into Agatha, why people believe in it, what they um, think it is, and then a little bit of a backstory into um, some other research that's going on. I think some of the big points to, oh, I've got a pins and needles on my foot. Big points to note from this is that uh, the polar ice caps are melting at a rapid, rapid, <laughs> I laugh, you've got to laugh otherwise you cry, um, a rapid, rapid rate and they are going to end life as we know it, 100%. They're going to end, like, they're, they're going to cause um, the next, like, global warming and the polar ice caps melting is going to cause the next mass extinction of our our planet and it's interesting to think about obviously this mass extinction will happen 
what's going to happen to our planet next and what are they going to think of all these structures we built are they our history is getting wiped out with that completely and something else will grow here and that's happened before when you try and wrap your head around that I just think that's I'm, that's what I'm leaving you with that's what I'm leaving you with because when I don't know when I think about that my mind's like whoa like this is not the first time this has happened the planet's been around for a really long time it just makes you feel really small yeah but not necessarily in a bad way um anyway i really hope you enjoyed this video guys if you want to see more stuff like this because this is like stuff i really enjoy talking about and making um i've made some notes of like different kind of conspiracies i want to like do some research into and like not debunk i don't think i'm debunking i just think i'm just chatting about it really um then let me know in the the, the description below um i'm gonna film a whole bunch before um i upload this so we've got some content to come so do remember to hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in my next one bye guys <laughs>